Well, today marks 22 years since the tragic events of 9-11. On September 11, 2001, 19 terrorists from the Al-Qaeda terrorist group hijacked four commercial airplanes. It'd be United Flight 175 and American Airlines Flight 11. Both of those took off from Boston that morning with nearly 150 people on board. Those two planes were crashed into the World Trade Center Twin Towers, the first happening at 8.46 a.m. American Airlines Flight 77 flying out of Washington, D.C. with 53 passengers and six crew members. They crashed into the Pentagon at 937, killing 184 people. United Flight 93 left Newark, New Jersey, headed for California with just 40 passengers and a crew on board. Those passengers overtook the hijackers, and that plane crashed in an empty field in Pennsylvania. In total, the attacks killed 2,977 people. More than 2,700 of them died in the Twin Towers collapse. It's been said the world stood still that day, watching it all happen and watching how we would react to it. And if you remember that day, all eyes were on New York, D.C. and Pennsylvania, and even local news took a pause. But that didn't mean Idaho was not affected and impacted by what happened 2,400 miles away. In today's 208 redial, I look back at what was happening here on September 11, 2001. From the moment that first plane, American Airlines Flight 11, crashed into Tower One, the shockwaves were felt as far away as Idaho. Within hours, everyone was on high alert. At about 10 o'clock this morning, the Mountain Home Air Force Base went on an increased state of alert called Threat Con Delta, one of the most restrictive states of alert here on the base. It was fairly instantaneous uh, with today's media and the way it works. Uh, we knew pretty much right from the beginning. Word of the attack spread quickly at Mountain Home Air Force Base. 5,000 people are stationed here. Just getting into the base was a challenge. Cars lined up for close to a mile. Armed base personnel went from car to car checking identification. Vehicles were searched. Search dogs were brought in. Entrance was restricted to only the people who had to be there. And those who had to be somewhere else, well, they had to get there another way. There will be flights going out. But there will be no flights going out today. Nationwide as of right now. My daughter's getting married Saturday, so I gotta get home. If I didn't have all this, I'd hitchhike. Okay, this is Todd with Global Travel in Boise. I need to cancel the reservation for tonight. At Global Travel, cancel was the word of the day. No problem, I'll call them right now and get it canceled. Hotel reservations and future flights. Yeah, everybody is canceling. A lot of people are wanting to drive from wherever they are to Boise. And vice versa, with planes grounded here and nothing doing here, passengers came here all headed for the same destination. They just want to go home. The only problem? So what do you have left to rent? Absolutely nothing. Mitch DeMitch is one of the lucky ones. He found a rental car to take him home to Billings, Montana. How long is that <laughs> trip going to take you? Uh, about 11 hours. By the next day, the Boise Airport was anything but the travel hub it was built to be. All but abandoned. Anybody wanting to go to the Bay Area or Reno? There is a gentleman at the South Wales Airlines ticket counter if you'd like to meet up with him. Planes would be grounded. No one in or out by air for two days. Meanwhile, the first reaction from our first responders? Hey, I've been on this shift for a year. About what you might expect. Caldwell Fire's third shift, the C shift, started Tuesday morning. Heard about the plane into the World Trade Tower building. I'll never forget where I was the whole day. And we just kind of huddled around the TV and watched with, like I said, just disbelief. It was a shock. And then uh, when I saw the first building collapse, that was, it was just startling because you, you knew, you know, that those firefighters were in there and they had to been, you know, hundreds of deaths. To me, that brought tears to my eyes at that point, and uh, knowing that, that there were literally hundreds of emergency workers that were committed to doing their job there. It's terrible. I, I feel for all their families, all their loved ones. It's something that uh, I think affects us all. We all migrate. Uh, a uh, debt of gratitude. They've given the ultimate sacrifice that uh, we all know that we could have to give and just hope that we don't have to. The men hung a flag on their engine for solidarity. They wear bands on their badges for grief. I mean, it's not just, not just our brothers and sisters that, that died, it's everybody. I mean, I don't, 
I don't know what memorial they'll have for everybody, but that I don't know any memorial that could uh, even come close to be fitting. Hours after I was here, I called my wife at work and uh, just kind of assured her, I said, if there's ever any thing like that in this area or something that you know majorly you know destroys big parts of cities I said you know where I'd be the sentiment shared by a lot of our first responders and they still have a memorial a lot of them do the fire departments across the Treasure Valley still have a 9-11 memorial on those trucks on the 91st floor of Tower 2 the South Tower there were 130 employees of Washington Group International which was then a Boise based engineering firm the South Tower was the second tower hit on 9-11. Flight 175 crashing into it about six floors below where Washington's group offices were. That happened at 9.03 a.m. We weren't aware of it at the time, but of those 130 people in that office, 13 of them did not make it out alive.